what I want to do is I want to jump into the nitty gritty because as you guys know, this is something I kind of do. So it's this right here. And we talked about IVS Crypto 2023. Remember IVS? Remember how that was um, diamond sponsored by Ripple, right? So some of the newcomers, you know, and maybe there's a guy here right now as we speak, you feel basically speaking that when it comes to Jasmine, um, they're a partner with Ripple. They're not a partner of Ripple, okay? Um, it just means that Ripple is a diamond sponsor of the IVS crypto event. Now, what I want to talk about is we were so gung-ho about this per particular event. A lot of times, because of the language barriers and so on, we don't necessarily get to see, you know, a, rec a proper recorded video, especially not in English, you know? Why would it be in English? It's over in Japan. Um, and sometimes we want somebody like where there's level eight, shout out to him and some other people from that region to, you know, chop things up and, you know, give us a interpretation. Don't need that. This comes straight from Hara. So it's called Jasmine Lab Inc. Data and Finance Democracy, a new ecosystem for Web3. And if anything, I want to break this down because you know what? At the end of it, this should give you a broader perspective of where we're going with Jasmine. Not necessarily because I want to bore you to death with the educational side of things, but I want you guys to pay attention to some key findings that I saw in regards to this presentation. And I don't think this is something that we should just dismiss at all. So we're going to do what we do best here at CTN, and that is basically get into the nitty gritty of all of this. So please smash that like. Let's double check how we're doing on the likes real quick. We're at 35 likes. We have 41 people currently watching this. It might not be like the biggest turnout today. I understand that, you know, I didn't get the the thumbnail made and show made uh, at least like two or three hours in advance, you know, that'll affect some of the, you know, turnout tonight. Again, I wasn't feeling too good, but unless it's going to be a good show. So again, let's get into this. Um, give me just a second. All right. So in the process of reviewing this from the medium, all right, that's the bottom line. Let me just double check my settings real quick. Cause I don't want to be talking on mute. Um, yeah, the pitch presentation by Jasmine CFO, All right, Hara. Now, when I got more into this, there's some key things I wanted to point out. And I'm not going to read every single part of this verbatim. I don't want to bore you guys with all this stuff. But, you know, the announcement on the establishment of a new project to promote the token economy. That sounds pretty bullish in itself. But what exactly is this? So he talks about some of this pitch, if you will. And again, keep in mind where it's at. You know, they launched the new project, the Jasmine Labs, and had an objective of advancing the tokenomic, token economy for both Jasmine and other companies. Primary goal of this initiative is to spread their proprietary cryptocurrency, the Jasmine coin, across the globe to promote its growth. The secondary objective is to assist other enterprises in securing funds and acquiring users securely with the legal framework just as jasmine has done remember how we talked about you know it's a lot more than just obviously day fft data free flow with trust but understanding you know jasmine they were the first in japan to be regulatory compliant hence why they did get the title of bitcoin of japan it obviously has nothing to do with bitcoin and if anything it sounds like a stupid name and we talked about some of this before but it mentions with revisions in Japanese law, the environment is increasingly conducive for companies to create their own economic zones. Well, where are we going with this? Well, when I got more into this, I found this part, and maybe you skipped over this, but you know how Jasmine basically is labeled as, um, you know, for instance, promoting data democracy all the time. Well, what about this whole other thing they're getting into, finance democracy? So, like it says, from Har, they have coined this approach, finance democracy, and adopted it as their new slogan. You can't dismiss this, and we won't dismiss this. And I want to get into this just for a brief moment, because if you were wondering, well, Max, can you give me an example of this? Well, sure, absolutely you can. This is um, from SBS, and it says, the democratization of finance innovate and collaborate that is basically what jasmine is looking to do right now and i want you guys to have a broad understanding of what this means for you especially as a token holder um so when i got more into this you know i want to show you some obviously key highlights 
And it says, the subject of democratization of finance has been making the rounds again. The difference is that the simple reflections of 10 years ago seem to be given the rise to concrete actions today. Well, this was written a while back, but you do see the concrete actions of today. Um, you do literally see, for instance, Jasmine as a big proponent of trying to work with even like domestic banks. And that's something that doesn't get brought up a lot. A lot of times you'll see uh, people that make videos. They'll talk about, you know, things that obviously interest, you know, the typical investor. But I think a lot of times when it comes to understanding domestic, especially foreign stable coins, as we know, Tether is still banned in their country. Circle is as well. I, I've said that I felt as though Circle will probably be the first to be unbanned. I don't think both get unbanned at, at once. And we talked about that, I think, last week. But my point is what you see them trying to accomplish and getting this ball rolling way quicker than obviously what the United States is doing. Now, just check this out for a minute. All right. And on this next part, it goes into a little bit more detail. All right. Reinventing finance. Well, wasn't Jasmine also trying to reinvent data democratization or the concept of giving power back to uh, the people in regards to the data? Well, enter in, basically speaking, the world of finance. And last I checked, you know, maybe we shouldn't just necessarily trust even our banking sectors of the world with all that privatized data. Now, watch this. The democratization of finance is the result of global demand to complete rethink the financial system to make it more accessible to everyone, regardless of consumer standards of living income, geographic location. The first step is to getting to know how these consumers or getting to know these consumers better. When I got more into this, I was like, you know, this really, really makes sense in regards to applying it towards Jasmine. Uh, for instance, this open banking is at the heart of all these issues, right? Finance, democratization. The reform facilitates the circulation of personal information, which Jasmine is all about that, and aims above all to allow consumers to choose whether to share data with third parties. When you get into this whole thing that Hara pitched, he talks all, like big time about this whole concept about these third parties. Goes on to mention the goal is to improve the customer experience by offering a personalized response to the request. A study conducted by CGI in 2017 demonstrated that 63% of consumers would like to receive personalized offers, even if that meant making their personal information accessible to external firms. Interesting. As we get further into this, I'm going to show you this part real quick. Look at this. Banks are not the only ones to partner with fintechs to boost offerings. Um, it goes on to mention that, for instance, software as a service, because we do talk about SAAS, uh, solutions for online marketing and banking, insurance, same products. These solutions aim to provide customers with a native turnkey solution to help them subscribe to financial products. So for me, I think where we're going now is not just putting all the emphasis on only one utility layer. If anything, Jasmine is breaking into a whole new realm. And that is really, really big, or as the saying goes, is bullish. Now, am I going to leave you guys with just that? No, I'm not. I want to show you guys just a tad bit more in regards to all of this. So it goes on to mention, right, there's other companies. This is just, again, an example from 2017. But, like, various banking, uh, or I should say various banks, right, whether, you know, the domestic ones or the ones that work internationally, not necessarily just the central banks of the world, right? They, of course, have, as the saying goes, their own banking software, which one doesn't. But it mentions that they, as in this example for, with SEA, SBS, look to democratize the digital sale of banking problems by opening the finance market. For instance, this was in France, but we're talking about Japan and so on. Well, what about the finance market in Japan? Well, check this out. And if anything, I want to show you this. So, you know, Jasmine, to a sense, is a direct, um, or I says Japan, a lot of their policies are, is a direct result of what happened with COVID. 
says the COVID-19 crisis uh, accelerated, excuse me, previously initiated changes and is no longer enough to plan a digital approach and loyalty strategies. The democratization, and hear this out, of finance is an important topic because it goes beyond the simple banking framework, think about this for a moment, and challenges the thinking on inclusion, transparency, and security. What have we been studying, if you've been following us, for many, many months now when it comes to DFFT? Data free flow with trust. And why that's so big? So big because it's literally the regulatory framework that is needed in this world of trying to not just innovate, but evolve with where, with what we have in regards to our technologies and so on. Um, but if anything, trying to give us, especially here in the United States, some kind of a blueprint. Now, uh, on Monday, we were talking about, for instance, what we saw recently passed um, in the House and so on as far as our regulatory framework. And on the surface, it literally looks like DFFT, but restructured and rebranded, if you will. Now, where I wanna show you guys where this is so important to pay attention to is, and I'm gonna jump to this next page. If I could just get this darn keyboard to work, here we go. Um, and basically speaking is, there is a lot more to it than meets the eye when it comes to uh, Jasmine and some of these concepts. Concepts need to become reality is the bottom line. And look what's mentioned in regards to stable coins. Now, I understand that sometimes when I mention stable coins to you guys, um, even on a recorded video, you're just bored with it. You're just like, ah, stable coins. If I wanted to hear Max talk about stable coins, I'll go pay attention to a, you know, a, a you know, content creator that's going to cover um, Stellar USDC, now known as obviously Circle, um, or I'm going to pay attention to what's going on with Tether or Pay attention to the recent news about PayPal, and I couldn't blame you, but this is absolutely crucial, and I want to share this with you because I think there, for the most part, a lot of people just don't get this. So jump into this part of what Haru was explaining on this outline for just a brief moment, and then later on we'll get back in the comments, but I want you to see this. This is very, very important for the understanding, and maybe you're the type of person, you're like, I don't give a crap about the educational side of things. I just want to see price pumps. But once you do take the time to understand some of this, if anything, like I've always stated before, this is all a race. But it's finishing the race. It's not a quick sprint. You're invested into something that's a, literally a long marathon. There's going to be people that will quit this journey, this race to get to the finish line is the bottom line. Don't quit the race. Don't quit at all. Finish the course. Look at this, it says, establishing a unique economic sphere. With Japan's new regulations, now possible to issue stable coins and list tokens. This presents a significant opportunity for businesses to attract investors and users and expand their own economic spheres under the philosophy of finance democracy. We, as in Jasmine, leverage our accumulated expertise to support companies and projects in establishing their unique economic zones they believe the following three steps are crucial to realize this establishment. But before we get into this, I want to state this. Jasmine is now going about things um, in another direction, not necessarily where it's just focused on one thing. But again, remember we're talking about the multiple utility layers of what Jasmine brings. And what I mean is also is the services. Okay, so here's a little bit about this. Formation of a Web3 P2P community. Right, peer to peer community engaged directly with investors through social media, voice tools, incorporating user feedback to the project. For example, utilizing voice communication tools, Twitter spaces, so on and so forth. Expanding potential customers through token listing. Token listing is not just a means of fundraising, but also an opportunity to enhance the project's visibility. So, if anything, Jasmine is now also going to be providing consulting services. And you may think that's not a big business. It's absolutely huge. Let me show you why it's huge. So in the process of getting more into this, okay, you're going to see Hara specifically mention uh, a key area about this, okay? And basically speaking, um, it's a platform, okay? Now, they haven't had any officially, anything official about this, but when I got more into this, I found out about this one particular company um, and it's called token proof because if I think of anything, I think he mentions, um, specifically in regards to, um, the consulting services. Actually, let me jump back to this for a second. Yeah, here it is. 
Jasmine Labs token listing consulting services, just like literally I was mentioning earlier. Token listing is a crucial step for any project, yet it requires navigating complex procedures tailored to stringent rules and regulations that vary by country. Well, who has been always like more than safe when it comes to JVCEA, right? You know, formerly known FSA, Japan's version of the SEC. It has been Jasmine from day one. So they've always been like, you know, they always had a compliance layer, right? Talking about being a regulatory, having that regulatory compliance, they are there. Their team of experienced specialists at Jasmine Labs proposes suitable strategies and planning, offering support to meet unique listing requirements set by different countries and exchanges. What's bullish here is when we always talk about the whole concept of, you know, is this particular cryptocurrency or this particular project is regulatory compliant? How do we get to the path forward of, um, even in here in our, you know, our own country of, of having that regulatory compliance. Well, what did we see recently? What happened with PayPal P you know, P Y, uh, USD, right. And what platform did they pick? They picked PAX, right? Because that was a proven, uh, regulatory compliant, uh, platform that's proven itself more than enough times. Call that a, a, a safe choice that PayPal picked. Imagine now Jasmine in the future, literally being that uh, consulting services platform for the onboarding of many different cryptocurrencies with different use cases, whether they're part of where they have their own blockchain, their own distributed ledger technologies and so on. But Jasmine is literally the ones to help them get to that compliancy. Now, before people, you know, may decide, hey, Max, you're full of it. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm new. You got to keep in mind this. And I've been consistent about this every single time I talk about this. It's not what you know is who you're connected to. Who is Jasmine's plug? Who is their connect? Genki Oda. How so? SBI Japan. How really so? JVCEA. He is literally... And I, I don't even want to give him this title because I think this is just messed up. You know, I, I was about to say the Gary Gensler of, of Japan, but that it's that's not the case. You know what I mean? Like he's literally the opposite, right? Their their policies that they have over there, you know. So, um, God, I mean, they get it over there, right? They they embrace crypto, they embrace blockchain, DLT. Totally opposite over here. Yeah, we've had a hint of some awesome things that could happen, but. The thing with Ripple is a different situation. You know, that's trying to open things up for that pathway towards, you know, the hint of embracing these technologies and so on. In Japan, totally different thing. Wide open, right? So this guy who is part of the GAVCA, Genki Yoda, again, is their plug. And for them to have that consulting services and be able to be regulatory compliant and cool with people like, obviously, Genki Yoda, who is very well, well invested with Jasmine through what, guys? Bitcoin and so on. And, you know, there's also budget, right? Those are key things to never dismiss. So check this out. Jasmine Lands proposes a suitable strategy and planning, offering support to meet unique listing requirements, not just listing requirements, unique listing requirements set by different countries and exchanges. Remember we talked about some of this before? Did we not? Remember we talked about... In the future, with the super wall, especially, Jasmine won't even have to be reliant upon centralized exchanges. But what about through consulting services? This kind of takes it to a whole different perspective, does it not? It says, well, they handle the intricate procedural process on your behalf. Right. On your behalf. And furthermore, assist in fostering the project ecosystem and community development post-listing. What's a project that sounds very similar to this, but not 100% exactly like this? You know where I'm going with this. Shout out to Magic Power. Z Liechtenstein Exchange. Yeah, and Jasmine in the house. I mean, I wasn't planning that. But the point is, should we start now looking at Jasmine as literally being like the LCX? Hear me out, of Asia. Well... They're not exactly like LCX as far as being an exchange, but 
didn't last week check Liechtenstein Exchange as an LCX. Remember how we talked about they're looking, you know, you guys said it like well long last year. Max get into LCX. They're going to be like a bank base. They're going to they're try to be their own bank. Are we not seeing a lot of things with Jasmine teaming up with the banks and so on, right? And you're like, well, Max, you didn't explain this part yet. I'm going to get into that part. But everything that I've been looking more into, if we're talking about the tokenization of various different projects, whether it's for physical assets or tokenized assets, doesn't Jasmine seem very, very interesting? Doesn't it seem like, yeah, you know what? Max is not too far off. Jasmine's literally becoming like what LCX is doing, but it has more to it than just that. LCX doesn't have uh, personal data lockers and data democratization, right? But add another huge utility layer to their belt with these consulting services. All right, a little bit more about this. And I want to jump to what I show uh, my, my own finding. Now, this is not officially from Hara. And if anything, maybe this is the third party they went to. Again, don't quote me, but this is a great example either way to give you an idea of where we're going with this. Check this out for a moment. So this is token proof, okay? And like it says, connecting Web3 to the world through, you know, base experiences. And what I love about this is when you get into it, it gives you a little visualization of what we're talking about. So I'm going to start off here. And, you know, when, when we were talking about... Um, some basic concepts. Look at this on this a visualization. Watch this for a second. Scan QR. Token proof verified. Boom. Pretty much done. I mean, it's pretty much point and click. Now, you may be asking, well, what is token proof? They're a platform that empowers brands to create token based experiences to foster direct and meaningful relationships with their audiences through Power Web 3. If you go back to, for instance, what Mr. Haro was talking about, it literally mentions the same thing, and I'll show you the proof right here. It says, our token economy solution services include the following three. And then look at this. Yeah. Token proof gateway. With te the technology of token proof gateway, it becomes easier to authenticate and issue owned NFTs, FTs through the linkage between addresses, DBs, and enabling the fusion of Web3 and enrolled events, so on and so forth. To address these issues, Token Proof Gateway has been developed, making it possible to smoothly authenticate tokens in rural world scenarios. I mean, I'm totally leaning towards, I know you guys didn't get the official statement, and maybe this is just Max finding something that was not supposed to be leaked out. I don't know. I'm really thinking this is it. I'm being honest. I'm really thinking that they got this thing going on with them. Again, I could be completely wrong. And that's okay. Maybe there's another one that literally sounds just like it. But when you go to token proof, it's literally worded the same, almost spot on compared to what, you know, Hara was explaining over at IVS Crypto 2023. Pretty big deal. Get further into this. Why token proof? Simple. Like it says, token proof is so easy to use. It's a launch pad for non-Web3 natives to enter a new world full of possibilities. All right. Well, there were some examples of some of the non-Web3. Well, same examples of like the traditional banking. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Is it versatile? Token proof can be molded to meet the brand's needs. Maximizing loyalty through digital experiences to bring in like-minded people together in real life. It's safe. Um, it goes on more and more about this. You know, they have um, 200 plus interactive experience have been powered by token proof. So they've been around a while. Um, they got all this information on their site. You could take more of a look into it and so on. Um, I'm going to play this demo. It's only a minute. But again, like I was going to say, they've been around for a while. And, you know, if, if you guys are wondering, well, what's one of the big brands that they're uh, partnered with? Who doesn't have a ledger at this point? Maybe some of you guys don't. I mean, I saw that video about the lady who got hacked for XRP. It's horrible. But yeah, Ledger, right? And then obviously we share you guys some information from Coindesk. But nonetheless, let's play this. I'm going to get into some of the other key things. And if anything, I'm going to show you a whopper that you've never even seen before in regards to um, a market that you had maybe had no clue how much it's worth that Jasmine is heavily tied to. Right, it's main utility layer even before finance democracy. Let's jump into it. 
please smash that like let's see how we're doing on likes real quick we are at currently speaking 42 likes please smash the like let's play this demo for you in regards to token proof here we go You know, one thing I love from that little clip, where is it, uh, you know, towards the end where it says unlock utility, unlock web three. That was cool. Now let's get back into this because I mean, I know it's quite the outline, but I'm telling you flat out, I thought it was really, really neat to see um, some of these key findings. Um, so we're going to jump back to it and just pull it back up. And here we go. So yes, token proof. Do you guys feel as though that this is the one? It's literally worth the same. Again, it might not be. There's a chance it might not be. But if you're wondering about token proof and like their platform, do you know, Max, do they have, you know, a Twitter? You know, that's a good, it's a good point. But yes, they do. Here's their Twitter. And if anything, I'll give them a I guess I'll give them a follow. It says empowering brands to connect with their audiences through the power of token-based experiences, both online and in real life. Well, didn't uh, Mr. Hara talk about some of the stuff about in real life? I mean, literally, it's just slightly worded differently. Again, you know, I understand we got to get the official response from him, but at the same time, I can still do my extended research, can I not? Get some more into it. And here is one of the key areas that you may have missed with your eyeballs. Or if you're a guy driving down the street, listen to CTN, you're not going to see it anyway. Don't crash. Don't smash the like. We want you to have generational wealth in the future, do we not? Look at what's shown right here. The metaverse. You know, isn't Shazmi trying to enter into the metaverse eventually? Yeah, you better believe they are. So it could very well be this. Um, and if anything, you know, we showed you like a little demo of, of that. But yeah, they do have their platform empowering brands to connect with their audiences, like I mentioned through the power of token-based experiences. Hmm, interesting. All right, jumping back to what we also have in regards to the lineup. Um, I wanna show you guys this, and it's back to the whole idea of an OEM wallet. Now we talked about the super wallet and how big that could very well be. I should say could, it will eventually, right? And I, I don't know when it's gonna come out. I'm leaning towards the end of the year, but don't quote me on that. I'm not a dev. I'm just a guy who brings you information that I see when I get it, just like anybody else. But take a, uh, take a look at, into this for just a brief moment. So he goes on to mention that um, in his pitch, as in Hara, when he was presenting this at IVS Crypto 2023, it says, we offer customizable multi-chain supported wallets tailored to the needs of each company as an OEM. Now, if you're a type of guy in which you've never been exposed to IT and and all these concepts of OEM, and like it might just kind of sound a little bit Greek to you. Um, and here at CTM, we do a little bit of, of course, the educational side of things. So OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer, basically speaking, a company that manufactures products that are used as inputs to the production of another more complex product. What's well, an example of that? What you see with a WITS, some people call it WITS, you know? Yes, WITS is a perfect example because those are Internet of Things and they do use a lot of OEM devices. Um, we also know that, for instance, Jasmine doesn't just do have connections with, you know, 
the OEM side of things. There's always EMS, contract electronics manufacturing service. Those are typically contracted by OEM slash ODM to produce components or products. Uh, look at this other part. Contracting companies may choose to work with one or many EMS companies to produce parts or whole units. Jumping back to this real quick, I want to show you this. And, you know, when we talk about the stable coins, this is an area that you need to focus on. So this part, if you missed the earlier coverage, pay attention to this. And I know that sometimes when we talk about stable coins, people get bored of it. I'll tell you flat out, don't get bored with this. So check it out. It says, under the newly established legal framework, remember how we talk about DFFT all the time, data free flow with trust. That's a regulatory framework, not only for Japan, but, you know, we saw Tara Kona bring that over to the European Union, did we not? But it says, we are making preparations and applying to provide a Japanese yen denominated stablecoin enabling common payments. Look at this, common payments on web services and wallets. So Jasmine is truly going to break into a whole nother spear or realm of things, okay? Understand that there's other better payment solutions. You know, we could talk about Stellar all day, Ripple's XRP all day. But you gotta understand that, you know, this is big for Jasmine. Why is this big for Jasmine? That's the bottom line because it allows them to have that plug to a whole new uh, realm of, of revenue. Basically, that's the bottom line. I'm gonna show you that in a second. So serving as a unified payment method within its platforms and with potential for overseas use, the stablecoin is expected to assist in the global expansion of businesses. In this way, Jasmine Labs plays a pivotal role in creating a new economic sphere, pushing for the establishment of a token economy for businesses and projects. Now, listen to this for a second. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what I'm talking about. So, you know, there's a lot to it that people just don't really seem, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, one thing I was going to show you guys just real quick, I didn't mean to backtrack on this, but, you know, if you're a newcomer about when it comes to wallets and so on, think about how many wallets there are. And we talk about you know, um, cold storage wallets, obviously the ledger, there's MetaMask, there's Exodus, there's Trust Wallet from Binance, there's tons, Trezor, there's a bunch of different wallets is the bottom line. But as we get more into this, what I want you guys to understand is utility in motion, right? That's the bottom line. How are we going to break into um, specifically just that the utility in motion that we all hope and dream for, um, so on and so forth. Here is an example of why I'm showing you this about the stable coins. And this is the juicy part. If you've been waiting for the juicy, the juicy part, here it basically is. And let's jump on over to this. It's a thread. It's not super long, but it's going to give you a great example of uh, the utility of what Jasmine is looking to accomplish. So let me jump over to this. Here we go. And here's a great example. So Tether, for instance, we're always talking about Tether. Tether is not unbanned in Japan yet. Circle is not unbanned in Japan yet, but it will be. Tether has long been the big dog of stablecoins and in recent years has only grown in dominance. The token accounts for 68% of the global supply of stablecoins. True. What? does the most amount of volume even compared to BTC on a daily basis compared to everything else uh, of the top 100 on CMC is Tether. Um, and in that regard, you know, it says Tether's total market value is larger now than at the peak of the 2021 bull market. That's crazy. We know about the big news that we dropped in regards to PayPal. We talked about, we're not going to get so much in that, but what I do like that was posted is, you know, stable coins, like it says, proven incredibly lucrative for Tether. Well, stable coins could prove very lucrative for who? Japan. Having a Japanese yen denominated stable coin is going to be absolutely huge for Jasmine. I may be thinking, well, we're not to that point yet. Can you give me some of the examples? Yeah, you better believe I can. It says stable coins have proven incredibly lucrative. 
Um, I read that part, but bad. PayPal is facing stiffer competition in payments, is looking for ways to diversify into higher margin areas. Stable coins are a logical fit and potentially lucrative at, for, for one um, at a time when Tether's figures suggest that it's poised to post a bigger profit than, for instance, Starbucks. Look at this, BlackRock and even PayPal itself. The claim can be taken with a grain of salt that Tether's operations are notoriously opaque, true, but even in light of this, the company is likely to make a lot of money. Very, very true. Now, in regards to this whole Japanese yen, stable coin, and so on, um, you know, some areas of concern. People like, especially when it comes to Jasmine entering into this realm, maybe you just don't get the whole concept of the importance of the, you know, not just the internet of things, but like, you know, why is there so much emphasis on them, um, you know, pairing up with this? And basically speaking, it's like, you got to understand, you want to see that utility in motion. If you enable a whole bunch of people having access to, for instance, um, a pairing, whether it's domestically or foreign, it can create a, a ton more of volume. I don't even have the right word for it. I mean, it'll be obviously a lot more than a ton, but a lot more volume compared to the traditional approach of just focusing on one utility layer. All right. So before I jump to this next screen, I want to show you guys this here in just a moment, and that is um when it comes to interest rates right so it says when interest rates go up banks need to set more money aside um, they need to experience defaults in their own loan book rising rates often strain borrowers and eventually customers demand higher interest their savings which of course squeezes the margin teller does not have any of these issues it only lends to the u.s government which is considered risk-free plus users don't expect a return well when you get more into this and so on, there's other things that are, of course, mentioned in regards to the U.S. examples. But for Society 5.0, you do kind of need something that's going to contribute towards the local society. It can't just be all just benefiting Jasmine, you know, on, only, right, with their own stablecoin, whether it's DD or a yen-denominated DD, data democratization coin. So what I want to show you guys over here. It's just a tad bit more in regards to some of these key examples. And it was very unique, in my opinion. And it's this right here. Because if anything, with Jasmine, with what they're trying to do is, it's not more than just um, consulting services, okay? They are literally looking to take this to the whole next level. And if anything, I want to get into this here right now. I actually have on the wrong tab, my bad. Is this right here? Sorry, apologize. Sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to go back and forth. It says raising issues by the Jasmine project and moving toward data democracy. Now they're always talking about data democracy, but Haro, when he was put, pitching this, this is what really made him shine in, the, in that moment over in Japan. Give me just a moment to pull this up. All right, make sure I'm on the right page. He was able to shine the Japan because this was the aha moment. You know, you could talk about the concept of data democratization all day long, but do people really understand where they're looking to go with this? It says he liked to share Jasmine's philosophy and their initiatives towards data democracy. He's passionate about solving, um, or they are uh, solving issues related to personal data management. Generally, when using services on the internet, one is asked to provide a multitude of personal information. Right. This all sounds like KYC, does it not? Name, address, date of birth, gender, you name it. Credit card details. It says, yet few probably know how many sites they've given their personal data to. Very, very true. Especially concerning is more sensitive details like debt records, registration, marriage. Like at the end of the day, like nobody needs to know every single living thing about you, right? It says, where are all these details currently stored and who is managing them? Or our devices might be exposed to risks such as hacking. Is our device security truly robust? So when we talk about the idea of Internet of Things, what about like Gilbert Verdian was talking about? IoT as an Internet of Trust. Yeah, you see where I'm going with this. Can these corporations holding vast user data generally guarantee the security of individual data? Now, this is where Jasmine can really, really, really make an impact not so much um, from the just this perspective of, oh, they're selling a bunch of, you know, Jasmine um, 
you know, PDLs. I mean, like, uh, you know, secure blockchain PCs. And that's great. But a data marketplace, hear me out on this. So it says, we have profound reservations about the opacity surrounding the management and protection of personal data. In the line of these concerns, we at Jasmine advocate for data democracy. Yeah, no kidding. Our mission is to create an environment where individuals can manage their data and provide it with confidence. One, safely, you know, uh, store. We get this, right? But I want to jump to this real quick because I'm kind of, I just kind of need to get to this because otherwise I'm just going to get too far down into this. Um, basically, it's, it's it's in regards to monetizing the actual data. In my opinion, this was the, I guess you say the, the juicy part of it, right? So give me a second. I'm going to pull this up. It talks about leveraging some of these. Yeah, here we go. Leveraging these technologies. Uh, you know, they develop a new product. But before that, look what it says here. With this, you can monitor the state of your devices even remotely. We have a patent for this. Now, remember, Cosmos Sato has that patent, if you will. Um, and basically speaking, the key thing is the functionalities. And again, the juicy part is, I don't know why it's not highlighting this for whatever reason. Um, let's see if we just pull it up. No. That's not pulling it up. Anyway, it gets into the point about monetizing your data. All right. And then I'll just, I, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was on the other page, it got lost or so on. I apologize. I'm not still, uh, I'm not really feeling amazing, but I'm trying to get through it, have a fever. Here's the thing. All right. I want people to understand. We've talked for the longest time about monetizing your data. Isn't that utility in motion if you could monetize your data? We talk about personal data lockers, but you need to not just buy a blockchain PC. You need utility in motion, all right? So one of those utility layers is to be able to have that option of monetizing your data and then actually like going through it. That's the bottom line. In this article somewhere, I don't know what the heck happened to it. Let me just see if I can pull it up one last time. It, mon it talks about monetizing the data. Um, man. I mean, when I chop this up later, I'm going to see if I can just get to that key point. I, I got to get to that point. It was good stuff. So sorry about that. Um, just one more, hold on a second. Eh, man, it's just like, it must have been on the other page. But anyway, it mentions specifically about monetizing the darn data. All right. The key thing I, I want to share with you guys is monetizing that data, right? I swear it's in here somewhere. I don't know. Just not pulling up on the control F. Hara goes into detail about monetizing specifically that data. All right. So look here. How much is that industry basically worth? That was one of the key things I wanted to show or share with you guys. Um, let me see if this is on this page. Oh, it's not on that one either. I'll be darned. All right. They are looking to make a data marketplace, if you weren't aware of this. Um, and maybe this is on the previous page. Hold on a second. Ah, we'll go with this. My, my, my bad. I had a nice flowing outline. I hate when my outline gets messed up. I just hate it. Sometimes I'll somebody will send me a link. I'll click on the link, and then it messes up everything. So anyway, all right, we're going to do good. It's fine. A little hiccup. Um, yes, let's get into this for a second, all right? So I don't have the part about monetization, but we're going to get there. Is this part from Hara it says about the roadmap for data valuation? All right, listen to this part. By having many people use blockchain PC, we develop the number of data lockers will, of course, increase, and consequently, uh, the variety and volume of data will grow. This will form a large economic sphere, making it possible to value individual data through appropriate reward system. Ah, uh, that's why I should type. See, in my head, I was thinking monetization. Right? I should have been typing reward again, guys. I'm not firing on all cellulars tonight. Um, if anything, on the chopped up version, it would be a little bit better. So yes, they're addressing the whole idea of making it possible to value individual data through appropriate war system. Basically, that reward system is monetization, bottom line, through an ecosystem that properly utilizes data and provides rewards users can freely offer or grant their own data. Additionally, if needed, they can retrieve their data, leading to us you know, to believe that safe 
and a highly trustworthy data marketplace can be realized. Now, focus on these two things, the rewards and that data marketplace. And I swear we'll wrap this up here in a bit. Now, I want to show you this key area. And on this key area, you're going to see exactly why I made a big deal about this. So let's jump into it. And again, guys, I'm kind of struggling. I apologize, but um, sometimes, you know, we have our high moments and we have our low moments. I'm not doing too great tonight. And I, I kind of feel like I'm coming across that way. All right. So here is the actual page. Here it is. My bad. And the reason I want to show you this to you guys, it's from datacommercecloud.com. This site has specific statistics that you should pay attention to. So it says best data marketplaces in 2023. Now, the reason why I want to point this out, not just because I want to talk verbatim all the time, I don't, trust me, I don't, is because I want you guys to have an idea how big of a deal this really is. We could talk about data marketplaces all day. We could talk about the concept of data democratization all day. But sometimes I feel like people just don't really get the nitty gritty. Well, I'm being honest. I don't think a lot of people, there might be some of you guys, I don't mean any offense, but like some people just don't get the concept of how much this is really, really worth. So here it is. Data marketplaces, the best ones in 2023. I didn't do one for many years ago. Global data market uh, marketplace market size. Because, you know, a lot of times we, we reference GDP and stuff like that. Well, how about actual like, you know, the stats on global data marketplace market size that was valued at, listen to this guys, 968 million back in 2022. And the market is predicted to expand at a compound annual growth rate of 25% from 2023, what we're at now to 2030. This is big, especially if you hold Jasmine. That's why I didn't want to just dismiss it. So some of this stuff is I guess some of the stuff that you guys, some of you guys don't care about the educational side of things. I don't get it. Some of you guys just want to hear about the crazy price action stuff. I understand that. I, I can't, I, I have nothing against both sides. It says, by now, the advantage, advantages of the data marketplace model are common knowledge. Most require low-tech and integration effort. They generate a high return on invested for who? Data vendors. Data vendors. Who is one of the data vendors that we talked about before? And what kind of you know scaling solution was that? Centrally is a layer two, layer two solution, obviously, excuse me, for Jasmine to go from the crappy, was it 14 to I don't know what the stats are anymore, roughly 14 to 18 TPS for traditional ETH with their scaling solution, their layer two scaling solution to 1000 TPS. And we talked about it and they are technically a data vendor. So this next part and make data discovery easy for buyers. As more data marketplaces appear, it can be challenging for data buyers and providers to keep track of their platforms out there. Our data marketplace directory of course includes all these. Now I'm giving you a lot of examples. There's data raid, right? That sounds funny. Instead of you know, Gatorade, data raid, but this is called data as a service. We're talking about SAS before, right? So there's that. There's um, SAP data marketplace. You guys, I think you're familiar with some of these logos, right? Microsoft Azure. We've shoot how many times will we reference them, right? So there's a lot of different data marketplaces. Obviously, Amazon Web Services. So my point is this: if there is this huge industry, and Jasmine is literally looking to, you know, break into this industry. Right, we talk about every action has to have a reaction. Like we talk about, like Superman, for instance. No pun intended with the Super Bowl, but Superman. And while there's Kryptonite, right? Is is Jasmine literally like, you know, the the centralized data marketplace is Kryptonite? Hear me out on this. Could very well be because there's going to be a lot of demand for these new technologies. And if you don't believe me. When it comes to the whole concept of decentralized data, why is Google or why has Google gone over to Japan and attended some of these events in regards to uh, what, you know, not necessarily like Jasmine and so on, but they have attended some of these blockchain events, when, especially when it comes to the concept of decentralizing data. Because you wanna know something? Every great company wants to recognize where the shift is going, right? Um, 
a perfect example basically is Facebook, right? Remember when we all came from MySpace to Facebook? And then, of course, you know, Facebook became meta. They had to innovate, right? Get into the metaverse and so on, right? And create advanced AI models for marketing, right? Shout out to Mike Cornwell and Edward Vincent in regards to like understanding like Facebook marketing and stuff like that, right? The AI models built into meta business suite and stuff like that, okay? You have to be innovative. Another great example is Amazon, the late 1990s. If they had the attitude that they were just going to be an online bookstore, do you think that they would be, you think Jeff Bezos would be one of the richest people in the world? No. All right. So I showed you guys some of this and here's some of the good stuff that I was able to pull up. So I want you to keep this number in your head. And that is basically, sorry, this right here, um, 968 million in regards to global data marketplace market size. And now we're going to jump over to this. So basically speaking, I went to this site called Omni Calculator, and we took the balance of 968 million with that interest rate, like I mentioned before, of um, a compound annual growth rate of 25%. We plugged it in here. Uh, the term is going to be for seven years. Why? Because we're in 2023 and we're going out to 2030. Are we not? Okay. And then on top of that, um, when it calculates it all up because it's got its own thing, it comes to a final balance of what? Five billion four hundred seventy-one million one hundred ninety-five thousand eight hundred fifty is what this is basically worth. Now that's global. Don't get me wrong, but last I saw, if this is just one part of many parts of what Jasmine is trying to do in regards to this many layers of utility, well, for them to break into this industry, which is a huge industry, you can imagine how much Jasmine will be worth in the future. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be worth this market cap. If anything, it'd be worth a hell of a lot more than that, right? Because, again, this is just one area. What area? Well, basically speaking, this is, uh, you know, the global data marketplace. But they're entering into a very unique sector for that global data marketplace. You know, the global decentralized data marketplace. And last I've seen, there's not a lot of that, right? Um, and if anything for them to provide consulting services and all sorts of different things that contribute towards society 5.0. That's a very, very, very big deal. So glad to share that with you guys. I mean, it took a little bit extra time to explain it. You gotta keep in mind, I'm not firing on all cylinders tonight. Just don't feel too well, but I thought it was a big deal because again, this right here, it was valued at 968 million in 2022. Big thing is going to happen by 2030. And like it says, the advantages of the data marketplace model are common knowledge, but they both require low tech and integration effort can generate high return on investment for data vendors. Well, what about a token that we've all got into that can create a high return on investment? Some people call it very risky, call it whatever you want. But you've consistently seen Jasmine kill it with some of the things that they're obviously building in the background. Sometimes it gets, you know, they get criticism, but it doesn't matter if it's Jasmine, it doesn't matter if it's XTC, you name it. A lot of times when you see things too silent in the marketing, again, what has it proved? Building in the background, that's the key thing. Hara mentioned the, the idea like, wow, it's great that they sold like 20,000 blockchain PCs. Um, and that's great, like I've always mentioned, is that utility in motion? No, it's not. You need those 20,000 PCs, not just ordered, but literally hooked up to the internet and that utility being constantly used over and over and over again, right? That's the key thing. You know, we talk about this whole thing and I'm not going to bring it back up, but it's, um, you know, that data marketplace, right? If you have all these PDLs, not just thousands, but you know, in the future, millions of these PDLs, and it's 
has access to a data marketplace. Well, think about how, guys, come on. I mean, you, sh you know, I don't mean this disrespectfully. I, I got to use my head too, right? Amazon was huge. Facebook, Facebook, Meta, right? These are all the big players when it comes to data marketplaces. These are multi-billion dollar companies. You create something that's going to disrupt an industry. Let's face it, it really, really needs to be disrupted. Uh, that's that's why I'm so incredibly bullish on jazz. That's why I always will talk about Jasmine. I just don't I don't think for for the naysayers they just don't get it. I don't mean that disrespectfully, but there's just so many people that they just don't get. It. They look at it like oh it's just ERC twenty token. Okay, did you research about it can actually scale? No, I didn't do that. All I researched was a chart. I have a stupid you know uh, avatar of a of a puppy dog. Uh, my, my name is two syllables, it starts with the M and ends with their mind. And, and all I do is FUD Jasmine with one chart and that's it. And that's all the research you need to do. Uh, you know, what was Jasmine to scam? Jasmine scam. They don't even talk right. Jasmine scam. Where, who are you? Jasmine scam. Huh? Scam. Okay. We'll move along now. But my point is utility in motion. That marketplace, guys, would probably be the biggest deal for Jasmine. We could talk about all this other stuff and all these other partnerships and so on. I'm telling you, the bigger picture is the main utility layer connected to a whole marketplace. A marketplace of decentralized data where people have control of that data. Data, excuse me, utility in motion with that data. Like, literally, the crypto night towards a centralized authority is this is a jasmine is a disruptor you know it's it's disrupting and like i said an industry totally needs to be disrupted i mean in, in some cases um this is very very extremely unique and if anything they can monopolize which sounds like it sounds like an oxymoron when you think about it right you, you know you don't want necessarily a monopoly on a on anything right I mean, you do as a business, but you get what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to sound like an oxymoron, but again, I'm struggling with this. I'm having a hard time today. Anyway, it's a disruptor. It's going to be huge, in my opinion, because it's very unique with what they provide. You don't see a lot of decentralized data marketplaces out there. You see storage systems, right? Like there's Filecoin. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of Filecoin. With what Jasmine's looking to do with the consulting services, the ties that they have to, oh my God, you know, even domestic banks. I just hope they never piss off Genki Oda. Can we, can we just all agree on that? Anyway.